So I'm really happy to be here. Uh, this is a very uh, uh, restricted audience of uh, those people who are involved in both the space and the geospatial sector. These are two very critical sectors for India to grow and advance. India is uh, today the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, in another two and a half years, it will be the third largest economy overtaking Japan and Germany. Uh, our aim is to be a $30 trillion economy by 2047, which means that your GDP should grow in the next two decades by about eight times. Now, this will not happen uh, till we do not make uh, major breakthroughs in cutting edge areas of growth, in which the two critical areas are space and the geospatial sectors. I've been a long term believer that uh, space sector opens up very, very vast opportunities for many of our companies, particularly the startup sectors. We've uh, taken particular initiatives at the behest of the Prime Minister who's really driven the opening up of both the space and the geospatial sectors. Uh, I'm particularly aware of the vast amount of opposition that was faced in both the space sector and the geospatial sector for their opening up. Uh, there was widespread opposition from several government departments and government agencies. They were all overcome so that we can make these sectors grow. The objective is uh, that this in the space sector, our share should grow from about 2% to 10% of the space sec global space sector economy. Now, this is a sector which is growing and expanding in a very big way, and that is why uh, separate uh, in space was constituted, which was headed, which is headed by a private sector. Mr. Pawan Goenka was brought in from the private sector so that he could hold the hands. And today we have over about uh, close to a uh, vast number of Indian startups are registered today to make a breakthrough. We've had examples of Skyroot. We've had examples of Agni Cool. Uh, who have done remarkable work. But the challenge really is that uh, oh, many, we need much more disruption in the space sector. And actually, as the United States itself has shown that NASA will do only limited amount of work in the strategic area, the rest of the space exploration will all be done by the private sector. The objective is exactly that, that the private sector must make technological breakthroughs in the space sector. The startups must work and use the vast amount of data that is being thrown, both for uh, purposes of disruption in large areas of our economy, as well as for satellite communication purposes, which to my mind will be very critical in India. If you have to reach across to a, a vast segment of our population, and India today is actually growing with just 50% of its population, which is growing rapidly. The other 50% of it is actually dependent on either agricultural wages or on vast number of government welfare schemes. We have to convert these 50% of the people from being passive participants in our economy into active, very active creators of economic growth. And that means you need disruption in learning outcomes, in health outcomes, in improving the nutritional standards. These are huge challenges. And these are challenges which can only be met if we are able to use space technology to uh, bring out massive learnings. Uh, we need real-time data. We need, in many of these areas, I've been a great believer in data for governance. When we did the aspirational district program. 
uh, we were able to bring, we were able to monitor the performance of data of 115 of our most backward districts in many of these areas on a real time basis. Now that was not possible when I was a young collector. I used to get data five years or six years late and we didn't know whether my, you could work hard but you didn't know whether your district has improved or gone backwards. But today you get data on a real time basis and therefore on a vast range of indices uh, we were able to get data on a real time basis to tell the collectors whether the district was improving or going backward and data was put out in public domain. And therefore, you know, a collector from Bilaspur in Madhya Pradesh came to me and said that I'm coming third in, and by the time we, we still had 12 days left of the month and he said, I'll work hard to make it come number one. But when I opened my computer, he had, by the time he had left and come to Delhi, in 48 hours, he'd moved from the third position to the sixth position. And however hard he tried, and when I showed him the computer and he said, I'll go back and I'll have to work really hard. But by the time he could go back, he could not make up and he could only come fourth. And this was all possible because of the availability of real-time data from various parts of India coming in. Now, there are still several villages, several blocks which are not covered, which will be possible to do it only with satellite communication on a much faster basis, much quicker basis. And that is why today what you are seeing uh, in the Russia-Ukraine war uh, the Starlink is still working in Ukraine. You're seeing several parts of it, uh, several parts of the world receiving data from St Starlink and communication getting improved as a consequence of the huge amount of innovation done by the private sector. And that is my belief that if India is to radically transform in good governance, data has to come in and that can only come in through space. That can only come in through satellite communication. Uh, you will see a huge amount of work being done uh, in this sector and if India's share in the global space economy has to go up, a lot of work has already been done by ISRO. Uh, if, but the real ambition should be to encourage a lot of private sector, a lot of young startups and that will bring in huge amount of disruption in due course. Many of our startups, over 5,000 startups are today working in the startup, in the space economy. And if we have to, these are people who must contribute to taking India's share from 2% to 10% of the global space economy in the years to come. Similarly, I would say for the geospatial sector, when we were opening it up, there were many, many challenges. But geospatial sector is the key to future growth. Because if you look at 20, 50, 50% 50 of India is still to be built. If you look at 20, 70, almost 80% of India is still to be built. And therefore the design of what we do and whatever we do has to be world class. Therefore drainage, sewage, solid waste, all this requires cutting edge technology. It will require digital twinning, it will require forecasting, it will require huge amount of work. And that is all possible only through uh, opening up geospatial services. Now earlier, when we used to do uh, geos use geospatial technology, vast amount of clearances were required from our security agencies, from science and technology, from uh, Air Force, from uh, armed forces. It was, it was a never-ending process of, of bureaucracy. And it was impossible to get this done, but the Prime Minister just put his foot down and we, we actually totally deregulated it. But the objective was that there'll be one single agency in the Department of Science and Technology which would clear all such proposals. And that uh, the survey, uh, uh, the, uh, the Director General Survey of India will play a very critical role in all this. Uh, I'm, I'm told that there are still some layers of bureaucracy still, away, still existing which need to be demolished so that we are able to push this even further. 
but i'm a, i have a i'm my belief is and i'm saying this because i headed the delhi mumbai industrial corridor and the challenge there was to make new cities now we are going to see close to about 500 million indians getting into the process of urbanization in the next five decades that means that we will be creating a chicago every three years in india now if you want to create a chicago every three years you can't have the same technology which we've used in the past for the process of urbanization we have to do top class urbanization and this would require a lot of digital twinning work being uh, being done today it will require the best of technology to be able to create the best of uh, urbanization we would require the best of technology to be able to actually uh, create uh, on on the digital blueprint the best of uh, new cities, the new growth centers, the new industrial hubs, all this. And that is why many new areas have been opened up, including Gati Shakti, so that we are able to converge and integrate many infrastructure projects along with this. So my belief is that space and geospatial sector, along with the opening up of the drone sector, which India has done, are areas which should really drive India's growth story in a very big way. There are areas which open up completely new avenues for growth. Uh, I'm also a believer that uh, we can go on working very hard in several traditional areas of growth, but you will not get either the growth or you will not be able to create quality jobs. All quality jobs and cutting edge growth if India has to grow at rates of 9 to 10 percent per annum, will all come from new areas of growth. And those will be space sectors, those will be geospatial sector, those will all be all emerging areas of growth. As we've seen when we opened up the PLI sector, the amount of jobs uh, which Apple has created in India is unparalleled. Uh, in just two and a half years time, it has emerged as the one of the biggest exporters from India. And Therefore, my belief is that we are just at the beginning, at the cusp of a very major revolution in the space and the geospatial sector. And all of you are, as user agencies have to fully tap into it so that we are able to make a quantum jump in these sectors and enable India to grow at rapid rates. Uh, I, you know, if there are challenges, you should tell us. If there are huge uh, bureaucratic delays, Tell us, we'll be very happy, uh, put them down in writing as a recommendation of this forum. We'll be very happy to initiate further action and act on them and ensure that India moves very rapidly forward in at least areas where there's both a political and an administrative commitment to enable India's private sector to grow rapidly and sees a very major component of the global economy. Now, these are areas where both hardware and software converge. These are areas where both uh, existing companies and startups converge. And these are areas where both, uh, you know, uh, Indian companies as well as foreign companies can both work together to make India a leading player in the global economy. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.